Well, today starts part 15 of the Peterbilt stretch. Still waiting on airbags. Um, I gotta put a bumper on the back of this thing. And uh, this bumper needs to do two things. It needs to meet the, re the requirements and it also needs to uh, give them a way to step up on to get to the tanker. So I had this old bus thing laying around, the old bus bumper. Took it off a, a bus, it's really, really heavy. I thought maybe someday I'd use it for something, but it's just too ugly for anything I really wanna put it on. But uh, anyways, so what we're gonna do is set this thing up to where it's right underneath this frame right here it's uh 10 inches tall our frame is sitting at 42 inches tall right now so we'll be 32 and at the bottom we'll make it 22 so it'll make it nice and low but not too low for him and then we picked up some uh take uh, takeoff lights for peterbilt and kenworth and he wants to use these on the back um i guess that's going to be okay he wants them mounted right on the top of here I think it's going to be ugly as ugly can be, but whatever. So what I have to do is come up with a mount that will come down this way and either replace that one and curve out or come out this way and curve this way to give us some strength because I not only need it to not do this, I need it to not do this as well. So that ought to be interesting. I got the torches out so I could do a couple things. I got to heat up these nuts on there so we can adjust this. Those brackets are slotted and I need to make brackets that are going to come off the frame itself. So, of course, we're going to use old truck frames. So I got the torches. I'm cutting out some bolts. I'm going to cut me a length, kind of rough cut with the torch. Um, and then I'll uh, clean it up with a better, a better way of cutting it or whatever once I have an idea. I know what length I need because I looked up the FMCSA web, uh, website and looked at the requirements for the bumper and I believe the maximum is 30 inches to the bottom. That's the maximum we can be is height and we're gonna be below that so that'll work out just fine. This is like 40, I don't recall, 46 to the top at right height, something like that. That's 10 inches, this is 10 inches, so you know we're already down below in the 20s, so we should be good. So, without further ado, it's time to cut off a piece of tra truck frame. So I cut them off. Um, this is one of the frames that I rejected using, and it had a twist to it this way, I believe it was. And you'd be surprised how much energy was stored in the end of that uh, when I cut it and it popped. So, I mean, it'll be fine for what we're doing, but obviously not adequate for the truck itself. But anyway, so let's get this out of here. So here's kind of what I'm thinking about for a layout. We'll have a left and a right. We're going to come down our truck frame, down to where we get, here's where the truck frame stops. Come down just a little bit farther, then we're going to cut in just a little bit wider than the actual mount is. And uh, then we're going to cut it off this way, so we'll use this section. Brackets are all finished up, primed and painted, cleaned up, primed and painted, just waiting for them to dry. Um, I don't really want to use this bumper off the school bus because I think it's kind of ugly, but um, that's what he wants to do and it saves me some time and definitely saves some money because it would end up in the scrap pile. And I've got uh, the ends of the frame touched up, primed and painted, so that's all ready to go and I've drilled the frame. So all we have to do tomorrow, once that paint dries, we'll put the brackets on and then we'll bolt this bumper on and get it adjusted. It can adjust. Um, I made it so it can adjust in and out and side to side. 
So I uh, took full advantage of some of the things that were already on the bumper and we'll get that on and then we can start with the lights. So I have spent the entire day on wiring. When I first went back to stretch these wires to the rear, I tested all the wires there to make sure we were having good signal. And of course, uh, the turn signal on the left worked. Sometimes the markers worked for a, the whole time and then all of a sudden they, they stopped working. And uh, the backup lights worked fine uh, until you turned on something else and then it didn't work. And I, I figured, screw it. I came up here and I pulled out all the old add-on wiring and all the stuff under the dash where they've done workarounds where something didn't work and instead of trying to find the problem they just took a wire and put it from here to here and went around it so i took all that crap out i've repaired everything soldered in everything and ran wires to make them correct like it should be so now we have our wires all the way to the back with signal good solid signal on all of them with uh, a, a very low ohms of resistance from one end to the other so I'm very happy with that we ended up splicing the original harness here but we ended up replacing several wires through the length of the truck and then I brought it back in loom zip tied it everywhere we can we don't want it sagging we don't want it to uh, we don't want it dragging or getting caught on anything. So now I have everything back here. So what we have is the red is for a switch that's on the dash. That's This is gonna be to illuminate an LED light bar back here, like a work light. So you don't have to leave the truck. You leave the truck running, but you don't have to be in reverse to have a light out back. And the light green is the actual backup lights. Uh, the dark green is your right turn, yellow is our left turn, brown is our marker, white is the ground, and this gray one is actually for clearance lights. Um, it's set up to where you could uh, set that up to where just the body that's on here can have these clearance lights on it uh, on a separate switch. We may not use it, but it was already in the harness and it was a good wire with good good continuity and low resistance so if nothing else we have another wire uh, in our raceway if we need it so now that that's all done um, I started the truck up and aired it up and wanted to move it so I could get it over this way just a little bit more and uh, this aluminum block here is cracked it's leaking so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take that apart and do the same thing that I did right there I'm gonna have to do it here only now I've got to do it with the drive shaft in the way. So, whatever. We'll get it. Um, just another setback, that's all. The uh, T-block on the front differential decided to uh, let loose. So, we're going to go ahead and replace this. I should have done it. Should have done it at the same time, and I didn't because I was like, eh, it's not leaking. Probably better not touch it. Well, I know better. I should have done it, and I didn't. It was mounted right up in here, and the hoses were close to this track bar, or the uh, pan hard bar, whatever you guys call it. So I just came down here lower and uh, went ahead and just made another plate, and we just welded it, cleaned up, and welded it to the frame. And now we'll just put another one of these T blocks on either side of it, and uh, that'll take care of it. But just waiting for it to cool a little bit. Yeah, it's cool enough now. I can get some primer on it, get some primer and paint. I can't say as I'm in love with the bumper itself, but whatever. It works. We got it in there. Got enough clearance here. It's not hidden either place. Put grease in between the two there, and we got four half-inch bolts. Four half-inch bolts and two three-quarter inch bolts down here. That ought to be adequate for what we're doing. And uh, now we need to work on lights. So I got to come up with something to put lights in this area. So these are new takeoff lights off of Peterbilt's and Kenworth's. Uh, they go in between the frame rails at the very rear. And they give you a left side stop turn tail, back up, license plate light, back up, and a right side stop turn tail. So we're going to use these on the back. He's trying to save some time and some money. 
so he wants to use this bracket and just bolt it on the truck somehow and uh, I don't like it there's there's absolutely nothing I like about it but um, you, you got to pick your battles and it's not a safety issue so I'm just gonna let it go so what I've done is um, I have swapped out this backup light for that turn signal on the left side and then this light and this turn signal on the right side and we'll have to rewire them so everything works right but this is what we end up with it gets us good light across the back which is really the the main focus um, I just don't like drilling to the top of this bumper to set this here because all the road debris and ice and salt because he told me originally this was not this can be a uh, seasonal truck only used in the summertime but you know I knew this that was probably not going to be the case so now it's turning into this going to be the main truck and the other one's going to be the backup but uh so i got to think all that stuff and i was trying to figure a way that i could put uh do something different um we don't need two license plate mounts i'll leave the mount on this side but i think i'm going to take a plasma cutter and cut this off across here and clean that up and get rid of this one maybe i don't know or maybe i'll just leave it don't bother with it it doesn't matter um but I would like to have put these down here in the bumper and made a plate to just go down in here and get them recessed real nice. But uh, that's more time, and I don't have the steel to do it. And, uh, you know, I can, I guess, throw this together as easy. I'm just not as happy with it. I would prefer something else. I would really like to have put, you know, plate steel from right where the curve starts right here all the way over to the middle here like in this area and just put all those lights in there and then just put only the license plate up above it you know um, but I don't know I, I don't like this at all but what are you gonna do it's not my truck I'm redoing my wiring and I already always heat uh, solder deox and heat shrink electrical connections um, there's you know sometimes you can use a the uh, heat shrink butt connectors, you know, the crimp connectors. Um, I just prefer to solder whenever I can. Um, it doesn't take a lot of deox because uh, if you put too much on, it just gets between the insulation of the wire and the uh, heat shrink and causes it not to seal as well. So you got to be very careful. That's why I leave this at a squeeze point makes it real fine when I put it on there usually I'll take two hands and make sure it's covered all the way around and then run the heat shrink up over it and uh, give it the beans and this is how I'll do every single wire connection outside of a truck. If it's inside the truck, eh, it may not be as critical, but uh, inside, pretty important. Kind of hard to do one-handed. I need to move that wire. So I have all this rewired now and zip tied in place. And then I come down and I'm using the ground, made a ground here. I cleaned it off with the flap disc, put a serrated washer on either side of the bolt then the eyelet, then a washer and lock nut, or lock washer and a nut. And those wire loom holders, I want it there so it's not rubbing on this edge of the metal. And then it comes around, comes around this side here. And then it's gonna come up like, kind of like this. So I need, I need to drill a hole here and get another wire loom holder. And then uh, this, these three, are gonna go to this side. So I'm gonna put uh, three holes, one here, one here, one here, put wire loom holders across that, and then, you know, repeat the same thing here. Rewire all that so we have our turn signal only on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to this. All right, I went ahead and put these mud flap mounts on. These are gonna be, I guess, a temporary thing. It's gonna get triple fenders here they go over all the drives, but um, apparently they're not going to be shipped for another four weeks. So rather than wait, we're going to put these on and we're going to put some 
in the front and put anti-sail brackets. The body sits pretty low on this, so we should be okay and not have anything with the tires because the body will cover it, at least for a little while. So I'm working on the airbag mounts. This is the original, and the original had a bolt here, and it had an inner bracket that bolted through there, and it was supposed to cut come in right there and come through the airline as well. And uh, then the shock would bolt up through here. Well, the shock went like this, and it would come up through here, and because of the angle it would be at, I'd have to cut off, you know, a good portion of my, my bracket here, and I just, I'm not willing to do that. So, you know, this thing may not get a shock for a while till I figure out where I can add it. I was thinking about adding it on the inside or something. I don't know. We'll see. But So I took one mount, and I cut this bracket off because we don't need it. What we're going to do is come up with a bracket and leave this cut open here. And we'll bring it up, and we'll match those inside bolt holes to this plate, to my plate I'm making, to those. So we'll bolt through both at the same time, and I'll keep it from twisting. Either way, and it gives us three more bolts holding this frame together tight because, you know, anywhere you can add bolts near the bottom as well as the top, um, it's definitely welcome because even in this span right here, anywhere that this frame can come out, uh, re it reduces the strength that you have. So uh, anytime I need to put a bolt in anywhere, I'm bolting it low, as you see with the with the mud flap mounts and going down low because uh, that's the most vulnerable spot right there. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna take torch and cut this off real quick. So I traced that pattern and I drilled the bolt holes. It's kind of weird. This thing has two uh, 5 eighths holes and one half inch. I don't know why anybody would do that. But we're going to go all 5 eighths. We'll just drill that one out once it's in place. And uh, I used an inch and a half annular cutter here and just sliced down the side. So let's... Uh, this is a side that'll be out. I don't know how much of this we can use, if any, but we'll see if it fits. Oh yeah, that'll work. That will work. Our bolt holes will be right on the bottom of here. That'll be just fine. Yeah, that'll work. It'll be cut like this. Looks like I'll mark this with a marker. I don't think we're going to get much of this, if at all, any of it. Um, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna mark it and cut it up this way, just because um, I'd rather have it than not have it. I'm out here laying this out, and I keep looking over here. Every time I do, I, I, I just hate this. I absolutely hate this. It just feels so wrong. Do so much work to try and do things nicely and then just do this. I really want to just take take this off and uh, come off of here with four by four by six box tube and just cut the holes in it and and, and weld it right to this bracket, you know, and. Uh, Weld it to the bracket right here because this is insignificant as far as heat treating. And uh, let it come off of here and put my three quarter LED in the end of it. That's what I really want to do. I think it looks so much nicer because it would get us, it would get us like probably in this area right here instead of being what this is right now. I just absolutely hate it. <sighs> just got to keep telling myself it's not my truck.
that'll do. And we'll just uh, put it on. We'll make us some gussets here. So I just cut some gussets out of that same material with the plasma cutter. This is kind of what I'm thinking. And I'll, whatever this distance is from here over, I'll match this over here. So I'll have to go this way a little bit. This one I have to go in this a little bit. But I think that'll be adequate. I got them all welded in, primed and painted. Now we just need to wait for it to dry so we can put them on and we can mark out our holes where we want to drill them. Airbag mounts are complete. We drilled all the holes, everything's bolted in, and I also drilled out this one. This is the one that was a half inch bolt, so they're all 5 8 now. I have ordered some extensions to thread into here. This is going to be very tight. I may have to clearance this a little bit, but that's okay. Um, when I ordered airbags for this, the ones that actually takes are still four weeks away. So I compromised, found something with the same travel, same ratings and all that, same compressed height, but just a slightly different mounting. And I need this mount here. They make a, a piece that threads into here and it's pipe thread to go into here and then it's a bolt thread on the outside so I can run a nut down and tighten this up because I don't want this thing, you know, without that, this thing could do this. And if you just used a brass fitting in here, the likeness of the brass fitting would break is pretty high. So that's all done, both sides. Next thing we have to do is plumbing. All right, so this lift axle, as many of you know, it is a spring lift air down, okay? So when you want to put the lift axle down, we put the controller inside the cab, and it's run on a quarter-inch line. I don't know why it's only a quarter-inch line, but that's all it was. Now, as far as we're concerned, we don't care if it takes a little while to fill the bags. If it takes a little while, that's okay. That can be done while the vehicle is actually, the tank is actually being filled, not a problem. But what we do want is it to exhaust quickly, as quick as possible. So when you go to back up or you're gonna make a real sharp turn, you can quick like uh, release the air out of it and you know not have to sit and wait. So if, if we plumbed it like it was before, when you went to lift this, it would exhaust the air out of these two bags through this quarter inch line, and it would have to go up into the cab and exhaust out of that valve up there. We don't wanna do that. We want it to be able to exhaust back here as fast as possible. So I called the guys at AMI and asked Alan if he had a quick release valve, and he did. So here we are. What this is, exactly what the, what the name says, it's a quick release. So what we'll be able to do now is we'll be able to bring a 3 8 line out of each one of these bags up to this valve. Our quarter inch line will feed into the valve. And what happens there is when we want the, air, the lift axle to drop, we want pressure in the bags, you push that valve, it sends air down this line into the top of this valve. When it gets in the top of this valve, there's a spring and a diaphragm in here. The air pressure coming in will overcome that diaphragm and open the port to each airbag. As long as there's pressure in this valve, it will sustain that same pressure because we have a regulator up there, not a ride height. So it's gonna keep the same pressure in these bags continuously. So this supply size really isn't a problem. So what we're going to do, what it will do is when we want to lift, the, the real thing that's an advantage to this is when we want to lift the lift axle, we want it to raise, you remove air from here. Now it just has to exhaust that quarter inch line up to there. It doesn't have to exhaust all this. What it does is lifts that off, off the exhaust and opens the two bags to the exhaust. And then all the air pressure will come out of there as the coil spring inside here is pushing up on it, it will exhaust all of it through the bottom of the bag. So that should make raising this axle much faster than the way it was on the other truck. So now what we have to do is get us a bracket up here, make us something to mount to this cross member. Um, if, if I hadn't done it already, I'd just make something and weld it, but I guess we'll be de doing bolting. But I'll make a bracket for here and mount this to it, and then we'll get our plumbing. We'll have to reduce this down, 
for the quarter inch because this is three eighths plumbing, not quarter. So uh, that's okay. We got the, we got the fittings. I think if not, we'll clean up some old ones. It'll be all right. All right, I got my bracket made and get my plumbing in. I don't have them two fittings yet, so I just ran this kind of back on itself. And uh, I'm gonna start it up and show you how a quick release valve works. Alright, so there you go. There's the proof of concept of how it's going to work, even though it only had to exhaust what was in this loop. You see it just comes out and goes right back in, just making that basically take place of the two airbags. But, like I said, you were supplying it with a small volume of air coming into it, so it has to overcome that spring. When it overcomes the spring, it pushes down, it covers this, seals off the exhaust and lets the air flow to the bags. When you remove this air pressure, now the spring takes over because there's more pressure on this side. So the spring take, takes over and it will push up and this pressure will push up on the diaphragm and exhaust. And we'll get it pretty well exhausted to this state because uh, our coil springs are going to lift it. So I've been measuring the tank because uh, it's here and I think instead of massaging the aluminum mount that comes out here because I need to take a flap disc and take off a little bit to make it fit inside here. I've just decided um, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity and beef this up a little bit and also make it go this way a little farther with some heavier material as well. We're still going to use the AR450 plate for all the uprights. Um, we are going to go a little taller though because I, I got that one inch rubber going in here and uh, when I put that one inch rubber in here that only leaves me just a little bit here to help keep the tank from coming sideways so I think we're going to add that inch on here but uh, so we're going to go over the proper, one of the properties. I'm, I've got some other truck frame. Unfortunately I got to cut it off a truck. It sucks but um, I don't have any cut and so I guess I'm just going to cut it off one of my trucks because I, I need to get this truck done. And um, I can't locate any local. I made some phone calls to salvage yards. They don't have what I'm looking for. So let's go. I'm going to take my partner saw over so I don't have to drag torches or anything. We're just going to try and slice it off and get it down to manageable pieces. So let's head over. It's three and a half, uh, three eighths thick. I was using my partner saw to cut it off um, so I didn't have to take it all the way back to the shop. But the blade kind of ran out so i'm gonna have to go pick up another one real quick so i can finish cutting this i made it just a little ways through here and it yeah just ran out It's a little easier to manage i can put it in the back of the truck by myself i used to use that partner saw to cut all the frames kind of like a plasma cutter but uh it does a nice job and it's pretty quick too all right now we're all loaded up let's uh let's head back all right so we got our truck frame and this is a little better than three eighths thick and it is three and five eighths tall here which is really good um, we're going to be using only one leg, one side of the flange, so we'll pick whichever one is in the best condition and we'll cut the other one off. Uh, this side over here has, uh, this side's pretty good, but I think this side, yeah, this side here has rust jacking on it, so we'll, uh, we'll cut this part off and not use it and we'll use the top part, but that is enough to get uh, three mounts a little, little bit longer. I only need a little over three feet, but I went a little longer than that. Just took as much as I could. So uh, let me get it cleaned up now. We'll uh, I'll take a needle scaler to it, flap disc, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll go from there. 
start laying it out. So that cleaned up pretty well, and the flange is good on both sides, so I'm just going to use this side, I think. And uh, I've got it laid out here. We're going to go down, uh, it's a little uh, over nine inches down to here. And I made me a straight line here to see how much I need to cut off, which I don't think I'm going to cut it. I think I'm just going to leave it, and uh, I'll just hit it with the flap disc and straighten it up just a little bit because my cut got off. You can see just a little bit down there. So now let's go look at the tank mounts and I'm going to show you the improvements that I'm going to make. One is the fact that it's thicker. Two is the fact I'm going to give myself a little more room in the bracket. So here is the tank. You can see the mount here. The mount stands off of the main runner. This is four inch aluminum channel and this is uh, aluminum angle. And total, we're sticking out. About three and a half inches. So if we're out three and a half inches and we are exactly 12 inches, I think I'm going to leave myself a quarter of an inch each way in that saddle to hold that. So it'll keep it from going forward and back. But I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch on each side um, because these. I've measured these out and they may be parallel, but that doesn't mean that these brackets are square to one another because it could be, you know, two of them could be a little farther forward than the other. We don't, we don't know. I've tried to measure off the corner just to see, but we're only mounting two, two of the brackets now and then we will uh, set it in place and then we'll clamp them together and then mark the other ones. <coughs> so. I'm gonna leave myself a little room just in case it happens to be crooked slightly if they're not just right. So it'll give me a little wiggle room with the brackets. So I got all my brackets on this piece laid out. We're giving ourselves a little room each way, like I said, and we're also going thicker with the uprights. Before we were using quarter, now we're going to 3 8 And uh, this is more of that AR450 plate. And it's tall enough that I'll be able to get two of the uprights out of each run this way. So that'll get me one mount, two mounts, three mounts, four mounts, five mounts, and six mounts. So I'll get all my uprights out of that. What I won't be able to do is get uh, the center gusset. So what I'm telling you is I have enough in that plate to make all of these uprights like this. I just don't have any to make I can't make it out of that plate these upright gussets in the center so I have another piece of AR 450 plate that's 3 8 so I'll just cut it out of that but that ought to be plenty strong that's 200,000 psi tensile strength I don't remember what the yield strength is and this truck frame is 120,000 psi so better than any mild steel because mild steel is right around 60,000 so without further ado now that I have my plan, I'd like to lay out my holes and drill them as this is one piece because it's easier uh, for the mag drill because I have something to work with much larger than a you know, little over 12 inch long piece because the mag drill gets a little tricky trying to get it positioned and hold well. I guess I failed at videoing today because I'm just trying really hard to get some work done 
I was trying to get all these brackets done today, but uh, I apparently underestimated the amount of time it takes to get the truck frame cleaned up, needle scaled, laid out, try to avoid bolt holes like this. Um, and, you know, just the sheer fact of cutting them out with a plasma cutter and then drilling all 48 holes in all six of them because I'm creating six all, all out of the same material. So I have that one and that one finished. They're, well, they're cut out of truck frame. They still have more to go, more work. But there's number three, there's four, there's five, and here's number six. That plasma cutter just cuts the stuff like butter. I could use a circular saw and I could get more precision and I wouldn't have to flap this this edge but it's so much slower compared to how fast that plasma cutter goes through that truck frame and I'm using that on I'm using on 220 but uh, you know it's a that's a dual voltage anyways you could use it on either or so the next thing I got to do is cut all these strips out of this 450 plate All the uprights are cut and I got two gussets out of that so I need four more so I found this piece this is 3 8 AR 450 as well and uh, I had just enough to get four of these out of here so I went ahead and cut myself a straight line here a reference line to start with and measured off and squared everything so now all I got to do is just plasma cut it out real quick now all the pieces are cut up I gotta re <laughs> I thought, you know, you think this is a hard part, but the hard part is getting everything set just right, tacking it in place and welding it. No, maybe not. So he's got these already cleaned up on the edges and where he's going to weld. So he's still working on some right now. We got four of them done and I ran out of gas on those ones and it boogered up my weld so I'm gonna have to grind them back out. I started grinding them out. I may just make new ones because it's more work to grind out the welds than it is to create new ones. So uh, these are done. I just need to get that piece made that goes across the top here and we have a bracket that comes off at an angle so I can only be so tall. So I got some of this uh, AR450 plate again and I've got it lined out for two and a half inches or two and a quarter that's all I can go and we'll cut these out clean them up and weld them on there and then those should be ready for prime paint all right so I got four of them complete the other two I think I'm gonna make new uh, I think it's more work to fix what's bad than it is to just cut out new plate and start over so I'm gonna go ahead and get these ones primed and painted so I can get on. First coat of primer on. I gotta wait for it to dry a little bit and then flip them all over and get the bottom sides of everything I can't get this way and then we'll get some paint. Well, the owner came by yesterday. He was in an all fired hurry to try and get this thing done yesterday so that he could um, start using the truck. I had finished the mounts and primed and painted them and he wanted to get the tank on so he bought some super duper adhesive that's supposed to hold that rubber in place we'll see how that works i have my doubts um but it's not my truck so whatever but my mount fit in here nicely i have a little bit of room either way um we're totally encapsulated it can't come this way it can't come this way he went to track supply and got these bolts and they didn't have nylocks so we'll be changing these out for nylocks as soon as we get them um, so that should let it kind of float. <clears throat> There's four mounts on it right now. 
because as you can see that's what was on the truck and these are the size bolts that were holding it so that's what it is um i was working on making this mount i started making this here and he wanted to just he didn't want me to do what i wanted to do he wanted me to do this so he scavenged through the shop and he found my some pieces i had laying around and um yeah well this is what we got so it's welded to the bumper not the way i'd want to do it but it is what it is had to move my cross member because we cleared this but i didn't know about that i should have looked at it better so we had to move a cross member back a little extra work there but the best part is now we have uh, a relay valve that's leaking up here so now if the tank is on you know it's less not as easy to fix so i gotta get in there and get the relay valve out and i gotta change out the quick release valve this truck just won't stop and i still gotta put two front tires on it this never ends so this is our relay valve we're having problems with and what's happening is our supplier from the reservoir comes in here and it sits in here and waiting for a signal to come in from the brake pedal to push down and overcome the spring that has it closed off and push it down and let air flow from here to these two delivery ports. So what's happening is our air is coming in, but our spring will not hold the uh, diaphragm tight to seal off our supply. So it's constantly leaking out of the exhaust so what I did to make sure that this is the problem is I took this line off which comes from the foot valve and I want to make sure there's nothing coming through here um, I plugged this line off we had nothing back feeding from the quick release valve which has a modulation built into it um, so I blocked this one off and re removed this one I had no air coming out of here so we knew it wasn't coming from the quick release valve and it wasn't coming from the foot valve because there was no air coming out of that line so that tells us it was in this uh, inside the valve so we're going to take that snap ring out here and get a look at it and see what it looks like all right so there's the exhaust port right there See, that's just a little flapper right there just to keep the crud out of it. And then there's a the spring we're talking about. And this is, there, look at that. There it is right there. There's the culprit. I'll bet that got in there from um, either changing out one of these or my drilling. Um see if it's actually hurt yeah I don't think that's gonna seal again oh maybe it will I don't know should we put it together and find out it's just one fitting hmm. yeah shoot let's just do that I'm gonna look up in here and clean it all out make sure everything else is clean in the bore um, but uh, if that's all it is we're going to see if that'll seal back up like i said i'll just uh hook up just the supply line if it stops leaking then not a big deal these are the handiest clamps i have ever ever owned um you know this is a spring in here so you've got to be able to hold the spring and put the snap ring back in but these things just make it so easy make sure we're seated all the way around there and then we'll take the clamp off take a light I'm going to push on that just a little bit with a screwdriver. Let's get these my snap ring pliers. Yeah, she's in. Okay. I'm going to go hook up this uh, reservoir line and see if that took care of it. I got this plumbed into shop there with a uh, shut off valve, so that'll be the moment of truth. Now we'll see if it still leaks. I got nothing. I'm putting it back together. So I'm under the truck, and there's the relay valve. 
that fixed the problem so it's no longer leaking out the exhaust however we have uh, an air leak at the foot valve and what's happening is this quick release valve is back feeding through our signal line up to the foot valve and making it come out the exhaust so I'm gonna have to take this apart see if I can fix it if not we gotta repair, replace it I right, got the quick release valve out and this is like a modulation line um, I think I've explained that before but there's nothing in the bottom but just a little diaphragm nothing at all and then in here it's more of the same diaphragm and a spring the orifice oh looky there looky there that's enough to stop it from sealing let me get a, let me get a pick and get that out of there fell down in there I have to turn it upside down to get it out this I'm gonna take the bottom off because that piece of crud unless that was it And that could have been it right there. I guess I'll take the bottom off just to be safe. Because there ain't nothing in here but a little diaphragm. And I had it off because I took the mounting bracket off. So you can see what it is here. It's just a O-ring on the outside that seals this plate to here. And then you see the exhaust here. This rubber diaphragm seals against that. Right, there's my piece of crud right there. Hmm. You see it? That's mm -hmm. self-induced, I think. I think that happened um, when the lines were open. We probably got some crud in it. You know, I'm only going to put two of these screws in tight because the other two go through the mounting bracket. But I'll start the other one so we know it's lined up. Boy, that's a dirty arm. Yeah, it's, it looks up, like you have gray hair on your arm. I've been up against the the one airline in here that gets plastered with grease from the U joints. All right, I'll put this back together quick. I didn't show, but I had to put this together upside down because that diaphragm lays in that fitting, so you have to have it laying down in there, and then you know. You can figure it out. Okay, no more leaks. So I'm gonna take it for a test drive and see how it does. So there's a whole lot more work that I was gonna do to this truck, like uh, mount a toolbox up here was one of them. Um, build fenders to go over top all of these and drop down here. That was another one. Um, what else there was some there's a few other things but uh he doesn't want to wait he he uh he wants to use the truck and he's coming to get it and he's not waiting any longer um i'm waiting on fittings the airbags he's going to take it without them so it's on him it's his truck not mine so one of the last couple things i need to do is put two front tires on it these are old um Toyo or something, Yokohama, made in J-Pan, and they're sold. They don't have the traditional DOT date on them, so we're going to change these out for a couple Michelin steers, so i got to get them off and get at it.
works. It recovers uh, building air pressure much faster too, so it's not too bad. But uh, there is a problem sometimes. This ignition switch will cut out. He's gonna have to replace that at some point. Well, back at the owner's house. I guess you just stick a fork in it. We're done with this one. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will uh, be getting back to our regular work uh, probably in the next week or two. I think we're going to take a little time off. And uh, I don't know. Probably going to take a little bit of time off with Jeff. He's not doing real well. He's still having some heart trouble. So, um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one.